good evening. Um, I hope you guys will enjoy this video on how to create a paperless classroom. Um, this is just some tips, some videos, and some suggestions that I have. Um, this does not show you how to actually make a document and make it uh, go into um, the Google Classroom and stuff like that. So um, let's go on. So the first reason, the first question that I always get is why should I go paperless? And the reason why you should go paperless is the paperless classroom allows teachers to connect, collaborate, communicate, as well as maximize the workflow, and it creates a sustainable classroom for you and your students. Step one, you want to keep your students learning your number one goal. So if you feel like um, you could become totally paperless, that's awesome. Um, partial paper, Partial paperless classrooms are probably going to be best in most learning situations because we still want them to be able to write on paper. We want them to be able to show steps in math problems and we want them to be able to do um, science projects that are hands on and they might need paper to do all that. Um, some other things is if you're in a reading class, uh, you might want to highlight some text that you're reading and um, annotate without having to use um, a computer, which um, helps students in the long run. And being able to write each step in your math problem uh, will help students understand where they go wrong. So sometimes only going partially paperless is better than going full paperless. So step two, um, in this tutorial uh, I have a bunch of videos that are links to different things for uh, what I use in the classroom. So this slide will allow you to click on the links and you will find help videos and guides for the G Suite. So getting familiar with the G Suite is the first thing that you need to do after coming up with all your learning goals. And just click each picture to find vi various videos on each one of those. Step three, these are my favorite things that I like to use with G Suite. Um, Pear Deck works wonderful with Google Slides and making them interactive and the students can answer questions while you're teaching. They can see the slides on your your computer on their computer and so basic it, it basically presents the information to them. Kami is my favorite uh, way to annotate PDFs and you can highlight text, you can write um, answers to your math problems, you can um, also do things like um, circling answers, drawing on things. Pear Deck does the same thing too. They can circle and write and draw on the slides. Quizzes is a wonderful alternative to Kahoot. Um, I know a lot of teachers that um, get to quizzes um, because the Kahoot is limited and the um, the time limit. Quizzes is is very different. Uh, I like that it has self paced uh, questions, so the students get to go at their own pace. They're not confined to a time limit. And you can find lots of quizzes or you can make your own. Quizlet is a way to study. So a lot of teachers use this to go ahead and um, make flashcards, some sample questions, and stuff like that for the students to answer. Quizlet Live is um, a build off of Quizlet. It is actually a game that the students get to play after they have studied with uh, the flashcards or the questions. And uh, what I like about Quizlet Live is that it automatically puts the students into groups if you're in 
the classroom. So once they log in to Quizlet Live, they have to go and find their um, their group members. And another thing that I like is Symbaloo. This is a website that um, keeps all of your favorite websites um, and apps in one place. Um, so if you're doing like a research project and you don't want your kids to go on and search on their own, you can find your pre-search your websites and um, download them and bookmark them to Symbaloo. All of these um, have tutorials and short videos to show you more. All you have to do is click each picture. All right, and my last slide is my to-do. So, and my not to-do. So under to-do, um, the best things that you need to do is be organized. That includes you and your students. Once you have organized yourself, and your students, you need to make your own templates and outlines and then save those things as PDFs. If you save them as PDFs um, in your Google Drive or on your desktop or however you save them um, in a folder, you can then upload those to Kami and it's the easiest way to go ahead and get your students to annotate using Kami. And then you can easily assign those PDFs as well to um, the Google Classroom. What you don't want to do, and this is very important, is you don't want to make assumptions. Your students may not be organized um, like you, so you need to show them how to be organized, show them how to make folders, show them how to make um, the, uh, the drive, uh, the Google Drive, a good thing to do. Um, and then also students may not know how to use these tools. I know I teach third grade and the students are coming from all paper. They basically are just using a pencil. Some students don't even know how to click a mouse or drag and drop. So teaching the students how to use the computer and how to use those tools that you will be using is going to be a key element in making sure that your paper cla paperless classroom is a success. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I'm going to put a link in the um, video description so that way you can get to the various links for the Google Suite and the Google uh, or the my favorites. Thank you.